light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. There are two points that I want to notice with you tonight. Number one, illumination. That's the light that they're talking that Jesus is talking about in these verses. And number two, our influence. But let's look at number one, illumination. Christ says, You are the light of the world. That means you are, I am, we all are. In these three verses, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tells us something that we need to remember. And that is that we are the shining lights in our community. Light eliminates darkness. Second Corinthians six fourteen says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Light and darkness provide like light and darkness produce an unequally yoked. An unequal yoked. It causes an improper balance. Just as light drives away darkness, darkness drives away light. A Christian ought to produce an influence that will have an effect on others. Not the other way around. They should not have the ability to affect us with their bad influence. No matter how bright your light is or how dim it is, it will always be shining. But remember that if you're not careful, you can sin so much that your light will go out. It may fade way down when you're with this group over here, or it may shine as bright as it can with this group. I would ask you, I want to ask you tonight, why do you do that? Why do you let it shine when you're with one group and let it fade when you're with another? Are you embarrassed of what they will think? Are you afraid of what they'll say about you? This is, there's absolutely nothing to be embarrassed about. Titus 2, 13 and 14 says, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing, of that great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify Him unto Himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Verse 14 tells, says peculiar people. Christ wants us to be different. Our lights need to stay consistent no matter who we are around. Why do you let your light shine when you're with this group and let it fade when you're with another if Christ wants you to be different? Light serves to guide others away from danger. Let's flip over to Philippians 2. Philippians 2, verses 15 and 16. Philippians 2, 15 and 16. It says that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may receive in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, not, neither labored in vain. We try our best to be good examples because we care about others, and we want to warn them from danger. Our light, our light shines through our example. Verse 16 says, holding forth the word of life. Is that not what we do as Christians? Take the truth to others? If it's not, then we should. What are we commanded to do? What we are commanded to do in these verses is we are told to be the lights of the world. We are commanded to not be unequally yoked, but to work together. We are told to be a peculiar people, zealous of good works. And we are told to take the gospel to others. Let's look at point number two, our influence. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men. The influence that you show others will affect you one way or another. We all have an influence, good or bad, rich or poor, young or old, weak or strong, male or female, one race or another. Influence can be changed from good to evil or from evil to good. We have all done something in our lives that has affected our influence in some way, good or bad. But we are to not let our lights be hidden under a bushel like we see in verse 15 of Matthew chapter 5. Some people get caught up and let their lights be hidden under a bushel of immorality and get caught up in sin. Notice that the verse says that it's our works that are to be seen, not the worker. The verse says, let your light shine. The best lights are the ones that put off more light and less shadow. It's the same as Christianity. As a Christian, you need to put off more of Christ and less of yourself. We sang the song just a minute ago, Send the Light. The chorus says, send the light, the blessed gospel light. 
Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. I love this song because it's talking about spreading the word. It says, send the light. This is talking about going, having action, not just sitting at home doing nothing. We have to go do something in order to please God and let our light shine. It says, let it shine. This is talking about our influence. Let our influence towards others be effective. Don't live your life as just another person, but live it for Christ. Each breath that you take, you need to realize that we were able to take that breath because of the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the cross. Christ gave us something, and that was His life. What can we do for Him? Why don't we try obeying Him? Christ says, let your light so shine before men. Philippians 14, I mean, excuse me, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Christ wants us to shine our lights. We are not lights in and of ourselves, but we are lights for the Lord. Let's look at the intention of our influence as we begin to close. Matthew 5.16 says that, you may, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The intention of our influence needs to be so others will obey God and glorify Him. Ephesians 5 verse 8 says, For you are sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We do not shine as lights for ourselves, but we shine as lights for God. We shine as lights for others' sake, so that they will have the opportunity to go to heaven. Is that not what our purpose here on earth is? To be an example like Christ and take others to gospel? If you've ever flown on an airplane, you will know that the stewardess at the beginning of the flight will stand up and give a safety presentation. She will say, if anything goes wrong in the flight, a mask will come down in front of you, and you will need to make sure that it's secure on your face before helping others. It's the same way with Christianity. We have to make sure that our salvation in Christ is secure before we help others. 1 Peter 2, verse 21 says, For even hereunto we are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in His steps. If we do not serve as examples to others, as a shining light, then we're not going to have the opportunity to go to heaven. In this verse, verse 21 of, Peter, of 1 Peter 2, it said, Peter tells us that Christ left us an example. He left us an example that is far greater than any other and that we need to follow in His steps. We are not once saved, always saved. We have to fight for our chance to go to heaven. We have to be the example that Christ wants us to be. That's the only way that I can think of that's possible. I want to become a full-time gospel preacher one day. But how am I going to get to that point? It's going to take hard work and lots of time and study. It's not going to happen overnight. I can't just put my pillow, I mean my Bible under my pillow and expect to wake up and know it all. In order to know what Christ wants us to do, we have to study His Word. Luke 13, 24 says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, for many I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. We have to strive to go to heaven. The word strive in Webster's Dictionary means to devote serious effort or energy. We have to put forth effort if we want to go to heaven. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in it thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Verse 14 at the end says, Few there be that find it. We have to get, dedicate our entire lives to Christ if we want to make it to heaven. But it's not going to be easy. Remember what Philippians 4.13 said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But we cannot just be a good example to others and expect to go to heaven. First, we have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. John 8.24 Repent of your sins, Acts 17.30. Confess the name of Jesus Christ, Matthew 10.32-33. And be baptized into the, in the name of Christ for the remission of sins, Acts 22.16. And live faithfully, Matthew 10, verse 22. Or it may be the case that you have already been baptized, but you have let your light fade. 
you let it shine with this group, and then over here, you will let it fade or go out. If that's the case, then why don't you come back to Christ tonight and let your light shine for Him as together we...